So it's a real pleasure to be here. And actually, the kind of chain of events that led to me being here on stage today, in fact, started 10 years ago with an experiment. And this was an experiment in education at ETH when we uh, created uh, a new course called the ETH Game Programming Laboratory in which students work in small teams to create a new video game from scratch. And what you see behind me are some examples of games created by the students over this 10-year uh, period since we started this course. We've been teaching it ever since. And this was really an experiment in education because uh, on the one hand, we created a course in games. Students take the course because they're super excited about making a video game. But it also has this educational mission because a video game combines kind of every ingredient of computer science as well as design into this one package. Um, and by going through that process, we could really allow the computer science students at ETH internalize those concepts um, more, more uh, deeply. And what we learned from teaching this course, well, on the one hand, the students made amazing games. This was fantastic. So in that sense, it was a success. But on top of that, without almost any effort on our side, this ecosystem grew around the course we created. So we started being approached by students saying, ah, I really want to do my master's thesis in this area. Or I want to even work on a PhD thesis. I have this research idea, let's do it. Some students continued uh, to jobs in the game industry, and uh, it had this deep impact on their career. So this was really um, interesting for us that, that what started as an educational effort led to this bigger uh, and deeper uh, concept in education with several publications, master's students, PhD students, career. And when we saw this, when we took, took a step back and said, you know, wow, all of this grew out of a, of a single course, what we really realized is there's more potential, there's a deeper potential for the role of game technology in science and education. And with that in mind, we created the ETH Game Technology Center. And this center has the core mission of applying advanced concepts in gaming, together with analytics and machine learning, to better understand human behavior. And one reason we're here today is that when we say advanced concepts, one of the core ideas we're talking about, in fact, are games that involve people interacting with one another, and also interaction with your environment. So technology that blends the gameplay into the world around us. And that's been a central theme. So in fact, augmented reality and virtual reality are core technologies we're exploring to advance this educational and research mission for the Game Technology Center. And today I want to talk about one particular um, project pillar that we're working on in this area, which deals with creative play. So what is creative play? Well, this is when children are interacting in a playful manner with their environment, with the world around them. And this type of interaction, it's very important for childhood development. But since we have so much amazing content ready for consumption, ready to go, there's a risk, really, that children become passive consumers of that content. And they lose that you know, direct, cr creative, physical interaction with the world around them. And we really believe that augmented reality holds a unique potential to impact the situation by allowing us to bring a magical layer of interaction on top of traditional creative activities. And this is really a concept we're calling augmented creativity, where we're using augmented reality 
to enhance creative play. And I want to show you several demos of prototype experiences we've created in this overall uh, concept of augmented creativity. Before I do that, I want to mention, well, we have a booth set up here at the conference just outside this room in uh, room number three. And you can visit the booth and try out for sand the things I'm showing on stage. And while I'm uh, starting our app, I also just wanted to give a big, big thank you to the team that's here with me at the conference, as well as everyone who helped to create the technology I'm showing. Couldn't do it without them. So right now, you're seeing a live uh, view of my iPad. So say hello, everybody. Hello. Excited after lunch, maybe half, halfway. <laughs> So well, on the table here, I have several, several different things. So the first, well, this is a page from a coloring book. And coloring is one of childhood's earliest creative activities. So with this prototype app, when I view the page, we recognize the line art that's printed on it, and then visualize the three-dimensional character that corresponding, corresponds to that artwork. Um, using augmented reality. So that's kind of cool. But right now she's blank because we haven't colored her. So I'm going to do some uh, quick coloring right here on stage to give her just a nice purple stripe along her, dre along her dress. Very good. Now, when I tap the screen, the system captures the texture that I just colored and applies it to the 3D model so that I can feel this um, direct interaction by decorating the uh, color on this 3D character. So I also have a uh, version that I colored earlier today. So if I capture that, we have now a beautifully colored uh, 3D animated character. What you see on the front is copied directly, but we also have an algorithm, uh, if I just rotate her around, we have an algorithm that invents what I might have colored on the back based on what's on the front. So coloring books often come with additional um, puzzles and other activities. So I have one here, so this is a maze. And in this case, our algorithm validates that I solved the maze correctly, and then visualizes uh, this character, his name is Professor Peanuts, uh, walking along the maze, um, along the path that I drew. And had I made a mistake, he would have stopped walking at that path, uh, at the point of the mistake, and uh, waited for me to correct it. We also have uh, this circle the word puzzle, so um, in this case, we validate that the we validate that I circled the proper words and then display the corresponding uh, three-dimensional character. Now, this was using uh, augmented reality to enhance this experience. And the important thing to understand is that, well, you know, while we have a lot of technology, I have an iPad and 3D graphics and animation and sound the actual interaction happens in the real world. So I can't do much with this app except by coloring in the real world. So we're using technology to place emphasis on that traditional activity. Now, we're not restricted to this area here. So to, the, to my right here, I have a Picasso self-portrait. It's not an actual, it's actually not a real self-portrait because there were some IP issues using <laughs> the real, uh, the real um, Picasso imagery. So we created one on, uh, on our own. Um, now, when a child visits a museum, that is culturally very important. There's a lot of value there. But for a child, a museum can seem extremely boring. It can be one of the most boring places because you have these old stuffy paintings. Who cares? We can help with that. We can bring interaction to that experience. So now, when I tap on the screen, I can throw these uh, 
balls of paint to recolor this drawing. If I swipe, I can uh, try out some different hairstyles, maybe uh, move his nose around a little bit, adjust the eyes. And I think with this new look, you know, he's a, he's a pretty happy guy. So that's a case where you know, we can really take that experience, bring interaction to the world around us, and maybe when you leave the museum, you can pick up a postcard of your personal creation from the gift shop rather than just the uh, original versions. We also explored the idea of interaction, of gameplay in the context of augmented reality. And to demo that, I want to show you um, these ink stamps. So these are ink stamps we produced in our lab using a laser cutter to um, uh, embed the design into the, into the rubber ink. And I'm going to stamp the stamp uh, live onto the page here. So here we go. So I'll just add this uh, dinosaur here. And when I do that, the system recognizes the stamp I just added and visualizes, visualizes the appropriate character. So let me do the second one. There's our second dinosaur. Now I have both of them. And it, in fact, uh, also detected the color of the ink I used and used that to um, adjust the color of the dinosaurs. And then we implemented this simple game. So now I can uh, battle the computer player here. And you can imagine having an entire collection of different stamps. So you have this video game, but in fact, you play the game by decorating the physical world around you. So this was considered interaction, but we can also um, enhance other modalities. And one of the most important ones is music. So music, again, is, it has a, a tremendous amount of creative importance. And to show you uh, what we can do there, we have a number of different cards here. And each card has a different instrument and musical style uh, printed on it. Uh, the first one here, these are the, this is the vocals. And when I view this card, we visualize the well, character, I'm working for my baby. And he comes to life and starts performing for us. I got a tiny little hole. So right now, it's just down. the vocals, but we can. Well, I can go ahead and add in she some other uh, instruments. So now we have a uh, rock and roll band. Maybe uh, instead of instead of rock, we can bring in some reggae, uh, some reggae instruments. You can even turn it up a tiny bit. So music is more important than, <laughs> than what I'm saying. So this is a reggae instruments. Um, that's pretty cool. Some people. Uh, perhaps prefer something more classic. So I can add a string quartet to the mix. But I think, you know, since you are a little bit tired uh, after lunch, what's more fun is to add some techno, uh, techno tracks to our performance. So we have a techno version. We're just missing the... Uh, disco ball to make that a bit more, uh, a bit more exciting. And then what's very cool is that we we can even take these different experiences and uh, combine them together. So now we have uh, Professor Peanut singing, but I can bring in the character I colored earlier and let her join, and even uh, Picasso who. <laughs> Picasso from our portrait to uh, join in the fun. So with that, I hope you see that there's really a tremendous potential to use technology to enhance this real-world interaction. Thank you very much.
Oh, oh, oh.